You're now tuned in to The Investor Show, where we teach simple wealth creation for the common investors with investment advisor, award-winning author, international speaker, and founder of Royal Financial Investment Group, Prince Dykes. I uh, comment and share button and all the other great stuff, but it always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. What up, what up? It's your boy Vigo Sachi. This is the Investor Show, and you're checking in with the Investor Genius, Prince Dykes. Let's you get it. In the description box, you can see today's video is going to be about you guessed it, blue chip stocks. What are blue chip stocks? A bunch of you have been asking me, emailing me, Prince. What about blue chip stocks? Tell us about blue chip stocks. What's going on with blue chip stocks? All of the great stuff. But here you go. Now you have it. So what I'm going to talk about? I'm going to talk about what is a blue chip stock. I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and I'm going to give you examples, what they are, and how to find them. All right, so stay tuned. So the first thing is, what are blue chip stocks? Blue chip stocks are considered to be their name behind the poker game. I don't play poker, but it's a good trivia question. The name behind the poker game, you know, the blue chip is high value. They are the big, large companies. Companies that's been around, well-established, have a market capitalization, of about five to ten billion, you know, up with large capitalization. Large capitalization is pretty much outstanding shares times the share price, whatever that comes out to be, that's the market capitalization. So blue chip companies or blue blue chip stocks are stocks that are well established companies. They've been around forever. We probably heard about them or we use them all our lives. Our parents use them. They're good, stable companies. They are, you know, they also pay dividends very high on a consistent basis. They're not very high, but dividends on a consistent basis. They are considered to be financially sound. They are the good guys. They're the ones that are a very good company, if I would per se, right? So now, what? why would someone, or what is a good idea, or what is a good part about investing into blue chip companies? One, they have a very strong dividend history that usually matches or beat inflation. That's the whole purpose of investing. The whole purpose of investing is I just can't save money. I have to invest it some type of way. So when you can invest your money some type of way that can historically beat dividends, not not, not historically beat dividends, historically pay dividends that beat inflation, it sounds like a pretty good idea, right? So that's one of the good things. It pays a good dividend history. The second thing is strong financials. We're not talking about a company or an OTC, a pink slip stock company that is just coming out that may disappear overnight. Uh, it's a new thing. People are trying to try it out. You know how it is. A startup. You're not investing into a startup. You're investing into a good, financially solid, stable company. Good product. When I won't say good product, but a product that has withstood the test of time. Most blue chip stocks have been through recessions, great depressions, um, things like that, economical downturns, things like that. So they're a little bit less risky. They're not as risky. So they're good, high quality, high value companies, right? So another thing is they have a large market capitalization. The large market capitalization means they have a lot of money. So one who has five or 10 billion, 20, 30 billion, the likelihood of them collapsing tomorrow is not as high as a company that may only have a hundred billion, maybe a hundred million. So, and another thing is they have usually have stable or a moderate risk of debt carried inside the company. So that's a good thing. Another thing, this is why wealthy investors like them. This is why a lot of you guys are probably interested in, and a lot of smart people, right, are interested in this. They understand the power of compounding interest. So historically, over decades, uh, blue chip stocks pay anywhere between 8 to 12% on a compounding basis. They usually have paid dividends. on a, They have a long history of paying dividends, and they have a long history of paying dividends that slowly increase. So people love that. They love that great idea of having a company that can pay dividends so they get that compounding interest effect. And for older people, well, I won't say older, anyone that has a large amount of money that wants to create a steady flow of income, they may look like uh, blue chip companies because, hey, this is a place I can put some money. You know, I, I won the lottery or I inherited a bunch of money. This is a place I can put some money that is not very risky 
and I can get uh, money paid back, right? Another thing, so those are just a few of the good ones. So I want to dial you out going back over and over so the good ones. So now we got to get into the bad, because what did I always tell you? If you don't know the downside of something, or if somebody can't tell you the downside of something, I don't think they don't, they know it that well, or that they have done their homework. So some of the things, a company that pays historically high dividends usually don't grow as much. What I mean by that is usually you won't see a blue chip company like a Coca-Cola just take off and just run up 15, 10% like you may see some of a technology company like an Amazon or a Google. Uh, Amazon or Google are a technology company. They're considered blue chip now that they're bigger, but you won't see these companies make, you know, make big dashes up, you know, 10, 20, 30% Double your money. The likelihood of you investing into a blue chip company right now here in March and you doubling your money by December or the stock doubling in price by December is, is pretty unlikely. The thing is, since they pay a healthy amount of dividends that you liked, they pay a healthy amount of dividends to investors, that's money that's going out of the company's money, right? The company could be using that money to grow itself, but they're paying a large sum of money to its investors. So the growth side of the house or the stock price itself may not be as enticing as other companies like new technology companies and things like that or whatever the case may be. And that's one of the reasons why Bitcoin is very uh, popular right now. What other asset class has a possibility of doubling or quadrupling your money by the end of the year? A blue chip? Probably not. The index? Probably not. Unless you're a forex trader, day trader, something like that. I'm not talking about trading style. We're talking about particular companies or asset classes that can go two, three times their value within over the next couple months. It's not too many out there that is projected or that can do that. So another thing is, um, another bad thing is, dividends are not guaranteed. Just because a company has a history of paying dividends, just because a company has uh, paid dividends for a long time, they do not have to pay those dividends forever. They can stop paying dividends. They can withdraw back on dividends. So if you're a dividend investor, that's something to consider. The board makes a decision on, hey, this year we're going to pay this much in dividends. So just because you're looking at a company because it's a large value company, you're a value that's going to pay you dividends, it doesn't have to pay you dividends, right? Uh, dividends are not guaranteed. Another thing is high expectations. Blue chip companies have a high expectations, right? You know, they, we expect Walmart to make a lot of money. We expect Coca-Cola to make a lot of money. But the time they get in trouble time, the times that something bad news come out, the time sales start to slow, people, uh, when, when they see the company start to decline like a Toys R Us, it was around for a long time, right? Soon as things got wicked, not wicked, but as soon as they got bad, had an economical downturn, is that's when those those uh conservative investors start to pull their money out, right? Because people are looking for very most people that invest in blue chip companies are looking for stable, low risk, things like that. So they have a high expectation of performing well and keeping people's money safe. Another thing is just because they're so big, just because they've done so good in the past, just because they have a strong earnings growth, all that other great stuff does not permit them from, from collapsing. 2008, who remembers General Motors? 2008, who remembers Lehman Brothers? 2008, who remembers, uh, who was another one? Ford. Some of the companies got bailed out, but we've seen a lot of big blue chip companies melt down overnight. So just because you are grabbing a blue chip, blue chip high value stock, doesn't mean your stock is going to last forever. So that's another thing to consider too. Now we're going to talk about what are some examples of blue chip companies. Apple, Goldman Sachs, Coca-Cola, Disney, just to name a few, right? Those are companies that we all know of, heard of, or been around, or seen, or something like that. Huge companies, great value companies, and things like that. So those are them. How can you find them? How can you get them? One of the easiest ways to invest in the blue chip companies, if you're interested in that, is really to track the index. Most of them are tracked inside of the index. So you can look inside the index and see the companies that are in the Dow Jones 30, and you can find blue chip companies. Also, look at the ones that are in the S&P 500. 
or the NASDAQ, the three top indexes, most of the blue chip companies are tracked by those indexes, right? Or you can go on to uh, E-Trade or a TD Ameritrade or Scott Trade, any broker firm, and you can set your filters to look at market capitalization. I want to look at large cap companies. I only want to look at companies that has a market capitalization of $10 billion or more. Those are going to pull up nine times out of ten, most of your blue chip companies, and that's how you can invest in them. But anyway, I'm not going to get too far into dividends and all the great stuff like that. That'll be enough for another video. But anyway, guys, my name is Prince Dice. This is the Investor Show. As always, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And to the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe. I'm out. Thank you.